Okay, we are live now. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's just wait a little bit for people to join in. Mm. Uh, um, so yeah, we have one person in the building. So welcome. <laughs> welcome. We have um one person currently. So anyway, guys, if you're watching this video, and for those of you who will re-watch this video, welcome to my life. My name is Faith Ojane, and I talk about ways you can travel abroad and settle abroad and every necessary information. So in today's live, I have a guest. Um, her name is Jenny. She she lived in um, Sweden for 10 years. Hi, Henry. Thanks for coming in. So I've invited her to come and talk about ways you can travel to Sweden, how you can move to Sweden. And so kindly invite your friends and everyone interested in going to Sweden to join the live. So I'm going to allow my guest, Jenny, to introduce herself and talk to you a little bit about how you can migrate. And when once she's done, I'm going to leave the link to this live so you can call in and so you can ask your questions if, you, if you're comfortable showing your face on camera or you can drop your comments. So thank you guys for joining in. Kenneth, hi. So over to you, Jenny. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Jennifer, and uh, I just migrated from Sweden to uh, the United Kingdom. So I lived in Sweden for 10 years before we moved to the United Kingdom. Um, I moved to Sweden as a dependent, so I moved to my husband, but that was 10 years ago. Um, yeah, um, Sweden is a very beautiful country. It has about 10.5 million people and like 50% of Sweden is covered in like forest and, you know, open fields. So it's really, really beautiful, a beautiful place to be, to raise a family. And uh, the immigration policy is not as tough or as hard as other countries right now. So like there are many ways, like many different ways to migrate to Sweden. Uh, some people use the student route, which is very, very popular. And then other people use the come through work. Uh, but one thing I'll say like maybe about when I moved to Sweden, that was in 2012. As at that time, there were so many universities that were admitting master's students free of charge. Like you don't pay school fees or anything like that. Um, so you study for free, but the only thing you had to come with was like, pocket money and uh, money to take care of yourself so it was very nice like that one was good and there are still so many some universities i'll not say so many but there are some universities for some courses that take you for like you know free no tuition or anything like that just your you know pocket money money to take care of yourself so that's one way people used to move to sweden then the other way is true work but since Sweden is like um, a Swedish speaking country, of course, they have their language. So it's not always easy to like get the kind of job you're looking for. But like right now, they have like shortage of workers in so many different areas from IT to engineering to like medical. A lot of people are needed. So they've like tried to open up and like bring people through that means so we have so many companies like i know of so many people that have moved and the city where i moved from they brought in a very big battery fabric that battery fabric is going to be producing battery for the whole of europe like the whole of europe and uh, it's battery for like cars like any battery you can think of so they need a lot of workers and that city i was living in we had it was a city of about eighty thousand people but when this company moved a lot of people moved both from different parts of europe from asia from china like one of the reasons why we even ran from that city was like you had we saw a lot of foreigners like foreigners everywhere that moved from different parts and this company is still hiring people they are bringing people because they don't have like the the people they are looking for, like the qualifications, they don't have it in Sweden. So they are bringing people from all over the world. So a lot of people are using that means to like move to Sweden. And then they have like other visa routes that people can use to move to Sweden, like um, the global um, talent visa. That one is for people that have like, if you have a BSc or a master's degree, um, you don't need to have a job offer. You don't need to, no company needs to employ you. All you have to do is like come, 
you apply for the it's a special right. visa. Special visa. Visa. I didn't know they have the global talent visa. Sorry yeah. to continue. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's too. amazing. Yeah. Just like yeah. the UK, like yeah. global talent. Mm. So do you know mm. like the criteria for that, like which industry, which occupation or field of sector? Yeah, like any 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 person like in the shortage occupation list like if so if you're a medical doctor you're an engineer it personnel it's open to you um you can just apply for it and then um yeah it's just to come to sweden um and you don't need to have a job, have a job. so that's, yeah, the, that's, that's the that's the good thing by the way, guys, Jenny is on YouTube. I posted her channel URL just in case you want to go and watch more videos about how to move to Sweden. She talks about that on her channel. And being the fact that she has lived in Sweden for 10 years, I mean, she's going to best advise you how to start your um, immigration process. So if you're interested in migrating to Sweden, I mean, if you're watching this video right now, you have questions, you can leave them in the comments. And if you're comfortable showing your face, you can call in. I already um, leave the link to the uh, conversation in the comments so you can join in. So um, do, if people can migrate to Sweden via the skilled worker routes, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can migrate yeah. via the skilled. Yeah. They have a lot of uh, openings right now. So yeah. it's very easy. And then one other visa that people can also use to uh, migrate i don't really know the name but as long as you have like i'll try to see if i can um, find the name as long as you're a bsc holder or a master's degree holder and um you have a plan to like you know start up a business in sweden it's not like a business visa but like you can use through that route because you don't need to have like um an idea or whatever you can come into sweden to check out the environment to see if there's anything you would like to invest in or oh, if there's a business you would like to start a job seeker visa yeah i think something yeah, like that yeah like that. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a job seeker visa so you can apply for the visa i think up to nine months and move yeah. to sweden just to yeah. see if you can get a job or start a business or something yeah yeah mm. you can then fight for your permanent residence so um is it Mira Max is saying that what about study routes? Yeah, uh, yeah. the study route yeah. is also open to students. They have a lot of universities, especially like in Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmo. That's where you have like the biggest universities in Sweden. And um, it's open. Um, depending on the course you want to do, the tuition is different for different courses. And um, it's just to apply. You can also see courses that are free. Um, so free tuition. You don't need to pay the school fees. The only thing you have to, to come with is just to show like a bank statements that shows that you can take care of yourself for like nine months. I think you need to have like, is it 9,000 Swedish crowns? That's like maybe 700 pounds or something like that for nine months, you know, for a period of 28 days or 30 days, something like that in your account. So that shows that you'll be able to take care of yourself. Mm. So for those um, courses that you don't pay any tuition then if it's for a course that you pay tuition of course you pay you show your school fees the process is very it's very very simple it's it's now faith you're mute i can't hear you sorry i don't know why <laughs> I mean, because like, it's echoing. Anyway, sorry about that. So do you know like a website where people can find free school in Sweden? At, from yeah. The top of your head? Yeah. yeah, they have, um, yeah, they have um, I think it's a uh, university. Uh, I have it on my phone because I sent that link to somebody. I'll try to see if I can check right now while we're live to see if I can say. Um, so that's where you have like all the universities that are offering English courses in Sweden, both for masters and for bachelor or uh, PhD. So it's a, it's like um, you just go there and then you search for any course. You can search for a course where you'll be paying tuition or the one with that is um, uh, tuition free. So they have like the filter bar and then you see what you want to pick. So let me see if I can find the link. Otherwise, I will try things to finish in this later. Okay, so um, is it 
Jeji, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, so I'm so sorry, <laughs> said, can one migrate with family at the same time, both for work or school? You yes. moved to Sweden, yes. where I study, right? Yeah, yeah. to my yeah, husband. So to my husband. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, oh, yeah, you can move with your yeah, family. Your um, the only visa where what you cannot move you with, with your family is if your family has an au pair. Oh, okay. So, we mm. have Cynthia here right now. She called in. Hi, Cynthia. You are on my live. You're on the screen right now. Can you hear me? Can you say something? uh okay if i can't hear you i'm just going to bring you down let me respond to some questions in the comment section so um what is the success rate of job seeker visa that's a good question do i mean the job seeker visa do you know so much about it i think they just launched it right yeah they just launched yeah, it and i know, know of two of people two actually people that actually. come into that visa uh the job seeker visa so I don't really know how how much people, how many are uh, like the amount of people applying for this visa, but I have seen of two people. That was how I got to even know about this visa. Then I went online to like, you know, search about it. Um, so yeah, they're giving out the visa. All they need is just for you to have like, you know, a higher qualification and then that's it. Is it like bachelor's or just normal master's? Is it because both people are confused? Bachelor's. Both bachelor's. If you have a, if you have a bachelor or you have a master's degree, any, 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 any one of them, you can use them. So it doesn't have to so be a master's degree. And with that visa, with that the, visa good, the good thing with that visa is that when you come in, you can use that visa to like either you find a job or you invest in a business so like in Sweden, Sweden is a very small country we have africans there but we don't have like you know a lot of african things in sweden so what people do is like maybe they try to like you know open a little shop where they sell african food or something like that and then they use that way to like you know stake their claim and say okay i have this business running i've come here and i want to stay and then they give you your permit to stay. And once you've stayed for five consecutive years, um, you qualify to like be a citizen. So that's it. So instead of someone to like, you know, maybe pay school fees and your hustle and all of that, you can also use that money to like, you know, invest in a business while trying to stay in the country. Okay. We have Cynthia here. Cynthia, can you hear us? You are currently on mute. If you can hear us, please say something. And there's a lot of echoing. So sorry about that, guys. Um, that's Gilbert. Mm. Yes, I'm here. Echoing. I'm that's, here. Okay, because I'm not using my headset, so the, it's going to echo if someone else is stuck in and the person is not on mute. So, so sorry. So, hi, Cynthia. Um, do you have a question or a contribution? What do you want to say? And while we'll wait for you and I'll put myself on mute. Mm. Mm. Are you there, Cynthia? Can you hear us? Okay, Cynthia, I'll wait for you while I take question from the comment section. So Kenneth said that, are there a job visa for BSc economy student? Okay, the thing is, okay, wait, I think I'm missing some questions of some questions have gone up. So let me start from um, um, Okoro, thank you. Scholar from Nigeria, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for the heads up, um, Gil, um, Gilbert. I that is why I'm putting myself on mute because of the echoing. Onyebuchi said, "Can I migrate as a tech worker?" Yes, yes, you yes, can. Yes, uh, uh, hi, Cynthia. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you're on mute. Hello. hello okay. <laughs> <laughs> welcome welcome to the live so um do you have any question or any pardon me please i have pardon kids here please. i have kids here we are all moms okay so it's fine <laughs> just feel free just say what okay stop it <laughs> Cynthia, I understand your children don't want to allow you to talk. So I'm just going to leave you on the screen. Once you sort that out, well, then you can talk to us. Then let me respond to some comments. So Mohammed said, um, kindly tell me the process to move.
fam with family visa to Sweden. So like, can you explain like the step by step process? What do, do they need to do first? I'm sure you can't just move with your family. You have to either have a certain visa. Then mm. do we have like a yeah. Swedish embassy in Nigeria. Yes, we do in yes, Abuja. Do. In Abuja. Okay, I don't know, Mohammed. I don't know which country you are. So you need to look for a Swedish country. So um, Cynthia is gone. Okay, so can you is it you you move with your family via the study route? So how was the process for you guys? Um, okay. Uh, so okay, my husband moved first. Um, my husband was staying in Sweden uh, for a while. Um, I think about three years before he came back and we got married okay i didn't know him when he was in sweden so he came back and we got married and then i moved as a dependent um to sweden so like if you're moving through the student routes of course after your study it's just natural that you go back to your country but then if you find uh, a job that gives you permit to stay in sweden so then you can stay yeah, finally the kids are good <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hey. Hi, thanks for uh, calling in. Okay. okay. So, um, do you have any question or anything you want you like to say? I actually live in Sweden, so I actually want to know more about oh, anything. We have more Sweden <laughs> in the building. I mean, thank you so much. We have another. You're not going anywhere, guys. We have another Sweden person in the building. That's the really big mean, life. <laughs> We are not going anywhere. We are doing this yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah, you know, from one okay. imagine we prayed for one Swedish person. I will go to it's so amazing, been, guys. <laughs> we have two people in the building now, so you can bombard them with your questions. So you're currently in Sweden. Yes. I mean, Jenny, see your fellow you people. <laughs> you guys know this is my town neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> We yes, see so how you find here, the here, country. Yeah. Jenny, you, you ran away yeah. from Sweden and came to the UK. Oh, I, I'm how are you finding the UK bad compared bad to bad Sweden? Bad oh. Bad oh. Bad we can hear you, Cynthia. Uh, the network is bad. Oh, no, Neto, come on, don't do this to Cynthia. <laughs> so now that you're in the UK, Jenny, and mm -hmm. you've lived in Sweden, how are you? How can you compare the two countries? I, I don't know, like, don't know, like <laughs> this UK, UK shocked me, like, like <laughs> it wasn't what I was expecting, like, I'm not going to even lie, this was not what I was expecting, Um, of course, like, of course, I did my research and all of that, I spoke to people before I moved, but still, the shock was there, because Sweden, like, there, we have a lot of benefits staying in Sweden, like normally, if you move to Sweden, it doesn't matter when you moved, how long you've stayed. As soon as you come, like you have free childcare for your children from the ones that are one year old to like their 18, 19. Schools free. They have free lunch, free breakfast, free lunch for the kids. And then for people that work like, you know, late in the night and all of that, um, they have like um, a daycare. I'll call it a daycare for where children can sleep in the night. So like when I was studying and my husband was working, some days like um, I could work also, like I worked till nine or 10 in the evenings and I had my one year old. So it's just to take him to that um, evening daycare. He sleeps there, they give him breakfast, they give him dinner, give him lunch and everything. And it was free of charge. I didn't pay a dime, okay? So like coming here and then knowing that I had 15 hours free for my three-year-old, I'm like, what is this? What the hell? And then for my one-year-old, the money they were calling, I was like, mm -mm, somebody have to be home because like, how do I pay that amount? And why am I working if I'm going to be paying up to a thousand pounds like a month? That's a lot of money. So that was the shock. Yeah, that was, was number one. That was number one. <laughs> and then... And then like, yeah. Like, knowing, that, like, knowing that, like, just because just I because am coming I, on a visa, I could not, like, you know, get child benefits and all of that. Yeah, it's really, this is part of my 
This no, it's not your fault. fault. <laughs> this network is they want to spoil our shine. What is going Absolutely. on? We have a lot of people in the comments who want to migrate to Sweden, and we have two Swedish people here. And the network, we have Fish, yeah, yeah. also on Fish. <laughs> How you? Um, how you okay, finding well, Sweden? Like, are you? You're in Nigerian, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, how did you move to Sweden? I came to join my husband. Join my husband. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, when? Yeah, easy for me. Oh, okay. So, how did your husband move? Mm. Mm. He came from Nigeria. He came, he came to look for greener pastures, you know. Pastures, you know. Okay, I mean, this is this study route or work? No, 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 no. He came no, with no, work. No, 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 no. He came with work. Oh, he got a job from Nigeria. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you know that like, a lot of people yeah. don't know that there are other countries outside the UK? At this point, I'm like, come on, guys. Honestly, if I know what I know about Sweden right now, I would have preferred it. Imagine. I'm in the UK, I can't have kids because of childcare is expensive. <laughs> I'm not joking right now. Are you serious? I, I have one child, but I want to have more kids. But when I think of daycare, £1,000 a month, I'm like, there's no way I'm having kids right now. <laughs> £1,000 a month. A month. That's the minimum. Wow. Like, it's as high as one six. That's someone's full month salary. Okay, so if I'm planning on coming to the UK now, she's planning on. Yeah. Oh, oh, are you planning on coming to the UK? You never, you never can tell me something. Yes. Yes. So if you're planning on coming to the UK and you're coming with kids, it's expensive. Especially if they are below the age of four. You know, from the age of three, four, they have access to fifteen hours. Okay, then I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, they have access, but from if they are bigger than four years old, you don't. It's free. You don't have okay. a problem. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So and how long have you been in Sweden? Almost five years now. Almost five years now. Oh wow! So yeah, now you're a citizen, I guess. Almost. Almost. Oh, nice. So <laughs> <Thank> if um. <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting you hot seat. Like I'm asking you a lot of questions. So, my for my people who would love to migrate to Sweden, what do you have to say to them? Like, you know, finding the country, moving to Sweden. First of all, you have to consider the language. Yeah, Jenny you mentioned. To, you have to go through the language. From nursery school level, it levels, can be very frustrating. But you're good with language, then it's very good for you. For you. Oh. But I must tell you, I must tell it's you very, frustrating. very frustrating because you get to feel like you like, know nothing. You know nothing. You can't communicate you when you graduate from your country. You can't speak you can't when they're talking to you. You just feel lost, lost most times. But I'm but here, I'm doing it. So you can also do it. Wow. So Jenny left Sweden after 10 years and she's currently in the UK. <laughs> I Jenny, how so are you much. finding me? So <laughs> oh, she's your friend. Oh, I miss her. She's so, she's a wonderful person. Like, oh my god. Oh you my god, god. this is emotional. We want, we want her here, but I wish we her, her here, there. I'm like, it's better for her there. Better for her there. Oh, I miss you too. Yeah, that's so sweet. You guys are so amazing. <laughs> I mean, this is so Thank amazing. Who is gonna miss me? Like, there's nobody missing me. <laughs> Don't worry, you get to start missing you something. Oh, come on, come over to you. Because I'm sure people watching be like, "Why are you guys just having fun? We are asking questions here." <laughs> so, um, but anyway, before I would go into the comments and ask um and take questions, um, I would like to know, Jenny, from you, live. The fact that you've lived in Sweden and now you moved to the UK, like mm -hmm. if you would advise anyone, which country would you would you ask them to go to first? Oh, that, that question is hard. Um, for me, I would say use Sweden as a stepping stone or as a starting point for your immigration and whatever, because it's easier for a young family trying to build their family, you know have kids and all of that i would say use sweden because if you consider the free child care the fact that you get child benefit for your children 
as soon as you give birth to them, you're paid almost a hundred and something pounds every month for every child. And the more children you get, the higher the amount. So some people take advantage of this fact and they go out having like five kids where they're getting close to like 1,500 pounds a month, 2,000. So, but don't be like that. But like for a young family starting life, um, or you're just, you just want to migrate, I would say you Sweden because you get to prepare yourself um, for other things. But for me personally, having lived in Sweden and I've lived here for two months now, I would still say I prefer the UK. Okay, <laughs> I've not lived here long enough, but um, like when it comes to the language and then the like to grow in your career, like career wise, I would say the UK because now I'm speaking and I feel confident. I can talk. I can stand among people. But living in Sweden, of course, I did my nursing course in Swed in Swedish. It wasn't easy. In my classroom, I was like the only immigrant. And I was studying with people that were born in Sweden, like Swedish people. And we stand and we have like presentations and we have like, you know, things to do. I'm there speaking my Swedish one one, like trying to catch up. Then they are far, far ahead of me. So that it that thing it plays like a big role. It destroys your self-confidence as a human being when you cannot communicate effectively, like to express yourself. It will really, really affect you. But if you're able to, like, you know, grow tough skin and just scale it through because you know why you're there, you know what you're aiming for. Once you get that, move on, move to a better country, move to somewhere. Like me, I studied and my tuition was free. I didn't have to pay a dime. But if I'd moved to the UK to study nursing, you know, maybe through my husband or whatever, I would be paying through my nose for education. But for Using well, that route, it was free now. And then I just moved here. I didn't have to come as a pre-registered nurse or whatever. I got my PIN, my UK PIN, already in Sweden. So I just carried my bag and I came here. Yeah. And I got my job while I was still in Sweden. So I just carried my bag and I came here. I don't have to go through any stress or any how to. And to, to, because I got my nursing degree in Sweden, I can work in Germany, I can work in Finland, I can work in Norway. I don't have to study any other thing. I just have to go there and say, I want to work. I'm a nurse, I study in Sweden, and I get the job. So it gives you some kind of opportunity, but it's, it's always your choice. But for me, I would say use Sweden as a starting stone, and then later you upgrade. It's just... That's what I would say. Mm. Well. Everything you just said, like, thank you, like, so, so much for just, like, saying this so that's to say generally if you are if, if you have family those of you who move with your family to the uk uk is expensive i cannot overemphasize how expensive the uk is honestly look at me now i'm getting old i can't have kids because it's expensive <laughs> you guys are laughing it's not funny i want to have all my children but like we switch money because the more kids you have, you have to get a bigger house, a bigger apartment. If you have different gender, if it's one boy, one girl, each of the children have to have their own room. I don't know if that rules is true, but they always say that in the UK. And like you said, coming to the UK to study, why are people coming to the UK to study? I still don't understand why. Because if so, the long and short of the story, if you want to, if you have families, you have children, please go to Sweden, the language is a barrier. Language is a huge barrier because it will stop you from communicating. But again, I think it's, it's gonna be cheaper to move to Sweden with your family than with time. You can then come to the UK, just like what you've done. Jenny, you're a citizen in Sweden. And with your citizen, citizenship, you can move to other countries that are under the European Union. Which I mean, right now you're balling. Honestly, I don't even know why you're in the UK. <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia, what like do you have kids? Yeah, I have two. Oh, yeah, have have kids. Two. yeah, so how are you finding it with your children so far? It's actually not easy. Not easy. Because here yeah, yeah. you don't really have friends, you don't even have anybody you can. I had Jennifer before she left. So Aww. it's Jennifer, actually very difficult with kids. Really if not school, you just have to be home with your children. And if you have to walk, you, you just have to, to just have to 
leave them at school leave there. Them there. Not there. You don't know. You're not okay you're leaving them there. Okay there. You don't know. After, 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 after school, let me say you walk eight to five or eight to six. The school closes around six. So you don't have to go get them early before that time. For those that work night, you have to apply for night care for them. So it's actually not easy with kids at all. So someone is asking, how is your accommodation like in Sweden? Like someone said, if I'm to migrate to Sweden as a student, so I'm asking, answering two questions at a time. Um, as a student, how can I get accommodation? You know, if you don't have anybody in Sweden, no family member, how do you go about to get accommodation? Okay, for the side where I live, you always have to be on a queue. Like you can take years to get accommodation. You can be. You have to lie. Um, it can take two years to get accommodation. Years, yeah. So how do people? Where do people live? <laughs> <laughs> that that's the bad thing. That's when one get, thing with Sweden. <laughs> okay, that's when, one thing. When, when you get Sweden, you think everything is easy, or the way it is, or the way they they hear it, but it's not like it is. When you're here, you understand what what goes on. What goes on here? Accommodation is one problem we have here. We have beautiful houses, big houses, but to get the house is now something else. It could take years. Bear that in mind. Yeah, that's one thing. Like for a student, maybe for a student, because they have something they call um um house guarantee for students. Okay. So if you're coming um as a student and you're coming, if you're going to the big cities like Stockholm. Malmo and Gothenburg, just know that you're going to be homeless. No, let, let me not say homeless. You're going to be looking for a house for a long time because getting a house there, it's crazy. People stay on the line because they have a queuing system here in, in, in Sweden where you stay. Some people queue for 20 years just to get accommodation in those big cities. But if, yes, most people like most people that live in those big cities, as soon as they give birth to their children, they put them on the queue for these houses. So imagine you, a stranger, coming in and then you want to compete with somebody that has been on the queue for 18 years or 20 years. No, nah, you will not no, get nah, the house. You will not get the house. So Wait, it's for rent, though, not to buy. For rent. For rent. Of course, it's for rent. Why would somebody want to This is serious. I mean, hi, sweet. You just joined the live. I don't know if you can hear us. If you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask. Um... <laughs> Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me now your people, Francis. <laughs> you can... Okay, this is. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this is life for the Swedish people. Like, um, sweet, do you have any contribution? I mean, like, we have, I'm the only one, okay. Well, I would say I'm the only one that has not been to Sweden on this live. So, everybody on this live right now that you're watching is in Sweden. So, you guys can bombard them with your question. So, sweet, what contribution do you have to say concerning um, what we're talking about? This really is a nice question. Nice Jennifer, call. Cynthia, Jennifer, what's up? Cynthia, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> it's really is a nice when question. Is a nice question. Really when, did you when did you move? How long have you been there? I came here in 2016. Mm -hmm. so really, oh, I've been that's here for six years. years. Yeah. yeah. Six wow. years. Wow. Okay, so those people who want to migrate to Sweden, like what advice do you have for them? This one, like accommodation takes years and queue. I'm like, this is to rent, not to buy. <laughs> this is very weird. Honestly, I don't know how to feel about it. Because right accommodation is left to buy is easier than to rent. Now, right now you should left, so they have a lot of houses right now. Especially when you go on Facebook. So I don't so, think it's that hard, hard, like, that hard like before. For yeah. to buy or to rent, to, or to, rent. to rent. Every day, Every day I see like ten, houses, 10 on houses on Facebook, people renting. Yeah, yeah, but but there's yeah, a queue for that. You cannot, you cannot just go. Nah, nah. It's like second hand. The only problem is it's expensive. expensive. Where do people stay when they get to Sweden? I don't know. I'm not that question. One thing I'm going to say, like when you're coming in as a student, they have 
house guarantee for you. Mm. Most universities, the university you're going to be using will be like, they will be guaranteeing you that, okay, if you study with us, we'll make sure that we look for somewhere for you to stay. It might take a month or it might take two months, but we'll find somewhere for you to stay. So that is the house guarantee. So if you're coming in as an international student, so try to make sure that you research the city you're going to be staying in and how long the waiting time is for students. So try to look for smaller cities, not the big cities. Of course, everybody wants to stay in the big city. It's beautiful. You have access to things. But when, you have, when you're staying in a smaller city, like the city where I was staying in or the city where we all are, we're staying in, it's a very small city. They need people to move to that city. So for students, I, I have like friends that are students and I know people that are coming like from Ghana, um, other countries, not really in Nigeria. They got um, student apartment through this house guarantee. So if you're going to be coming as a student, you don't need to be like afraid, afraid. Like, okay, you're not going to get a house or whatever. The university will make sure they provide you with something, but it might take like one to two months before you will get that. But for us, and even though you're coming in as a worker, maybe your company might say, we'll give you somewhere to stay for you to fix yourself for one or two weeks or maybe one month, but then you have to look for a house. Now you finding a house is going to be difficult. Anywhere in Sweden, it's always very difficult, but I don't know if it's changing now because they are building new new houses and they are trying to, because this has been a problem for a very long time. Before I left Sweden, I was also on the queue, even though we had our own house, but I was still on the queue because I was thinking maybe my children or whatever, maybe when they want to leave home, so it would be easier for them to rent a house. So it's not always That's easy. not always easy. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, on, I'm on the queue too. I'm on the queue too. Hey, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Wait, is it that they don't like building houses in that country? Or, uh, this, no, well, it's just that everything is government owned. So you don't have private landlords. You might be one or two private, or two private landlords, but everything is owned by the government. Sell, this uh, Selling of alcohol is owned by the government, so it's a monopoly something. They only have one store that sells alcohol in the whole of Sweden, and that is called System Bulaget. So yeah. if you want to buy alcohol, you always have to go to that store to buy your alcohol. And they have closing hours. It's not like in the UK. I was surprised. Like, I'm going to buy food. I'm seeing that they're selling alcohol. I say, what is happening? <laughs> because wow. it's something I'm not used to. You always have to go to this special place to buy alcohol. And then this place sometimes, like, you know, during the weekend, festive period, they're closed. People don't have alcohol to drink. <laughs> so if you're somebody that, like, so most things are owned by the government. Like, you know. So that's why that, that's really? why so that's, they are introducing the job seeker visa to attract skilled migrants to come into the country and search for mm -hmm. jobs. But you have accommodation issue. Yeah. Where are the people going yeah. to stay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did you survive in that country for 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> no, things are better. I just to you want to move to three days. It's better of then. Then I think things are better than now. Than now. So somebody asked in the comments, like, um, somebody asked in the comment, is it an international? Um, as an international student, what what kind of jobs are available, and what city would you advise a person to leave? And I was going to ask, since there's a language barrier, what kind of job can you do as an immigrant? So as an immigrant, so as an immigrant. Uh, that cannot speak, that cannot speak the language. You have very limited choices. Like your choices are not. They are not much um, until you learn the language. Um, so if you're coming as an international student, I would say you should pick cities that are close to like the bigger cities, like you have Stockholm, Malmo, and Gothenburg. Those are the three big cities in Sweden, Why Stockholm is the capital. So if you choose cities that are close to maybe Stockholm, Malmo, you have more opportunities to like find jobs. So the jobs that might be open to you will be mostly um, you know, cleaning jobs, jobs in the restaurant while you're studying, and then um, what else? That's it. We, if you cannot speak the language, but if you have like um, what would I say? Like other skills, or you're in a you, in an occupation where they have like shortage of workers, like IT or engineers. Um, engineering. engineering. 
then your chances are very very high that you find a very good company that will hire you like it doesn't matter if you can speak the language or not so that's just it oh okay so some jobs you don't really need to speak and mm. yeah um, so i mean cynthia i'm going to ask if you don't mind like right now you're working right so do you have to like um does your job involve communicating with the swedish people yes i speak swedish i speak swedish Oh, so you're a pro now. You don't have to <laughs> not be a pro. No, no, you can never be a pro. But I can communicate. You can never be a pro. Oh, but if I can for you now, you always have that thing there. You make that me feel like you're not it. So not it. I, I can no. communicate oh, that. Okay. okay. Hi, Annie. We have Annie here. Thank you for joining the live. Can you hear us? Do you have any questions? Or is Annie part of the Swedish people? Because right now I'm suspecting everyone calling. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. I mean, Jenny, you're so loved. Imagine all your friends came through for you. This is no, amazing. I, I don't I don't actually I know Jenny, but I just joined the light of information, you know. Oh, but you're in Sweden. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, so how did you move? Tell us your story. Um, I moved um, through. I moved through, 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 through in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Oh, just few. Oh, you're the newest person here in this call right now, cause Cynthia and Jenny they've been there for. Yeah. So, how was the process? Where did you move from? Is it which country did you move from? Um, I moved from um, Nigeria. Moved from Nigeria. Nigeria. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I just uh, want I want to correct something about the application. I feel like a lot of people might. Like my... Yeah, I do understand yeah, that it would be, be a problem. Be a problem. But I think but, um, the best thing um, for those who are going to go into Sweden is uh, as soon as you get your admission, you know, you just join the queue. For me, I think it took um, about a month for me to get my accommodation. Uh, so what most schools do, just like um, Jenny and um, Cynthia said, is they partner with uh, like private landlords. So they give you a site for each um, location. They usually have like their own site. We have blockheads for my own. I think I use Ostashon, um, Shem, or thereabouts. So they give you like a connect with private landlords and in most cases for students of course i don't know how easy it is for residents to get uh, accommodation but in most cases for students you would most likely get accommodation if you join the queue early i think what happens to most people that end up not getting accommodation is you know they take it for granted of course Sweden is not uk where you just wake up one day and then you are roaming the street and then you just go in and check a house and pay for it right away no so in most cases, you have to be on that queue. So the more days you, you stay on the queue, like the more points you gather. So apparently, if you've been longer on that queue, you would get accommodation sooner than somebody who is just joining today and then wants to get accommodation right away. So the more days you stay, you gather points. And then with that point, you're able to get accommodation. So I just wanted to clear that hope so that people don't get scared that I'm going to get stranded. No, you won't get stranded. You will most likely get most an accommodation. Oh, thank you so much. This is amazing. I mean, so someone is asking in the comment, what jobs are in demand in Sweden right now? Like, what jobs do they recruit um, people for very quickly? For Mostly IT jobs, IT engineers. IT. Then, okay, like we have presently, you have like Google, Apple, um, some private, some other companies, Asa, Abloy, and lots of them. They Even Spotify. Spotify is also. Spotify also. Yeah. Yeah. Ikea. 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 Yeah. Uh, I don't know how they say. Is it Ikea or Ikea? Uh, they are recruiting right now. <laughs> they need a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. So, Annie, someone asked a question like, what is the requirement to study in Sweden? Um, the requirement um, is it for bachelor's or, or master's? Let's just go with master because a lot of people in Nigeria already have their BSc, so most people just go via master's. Okay, okay. Um, so okay. for master's, um, so for um, master's um, HND or ND or so, um. 
with your bachelor's degree, yeah, you you I, I think the requirements are quite simple. Your bachelor's degree, your transcripts, and for Sweden, you can't send, I think for Nigeria, so you know I'm from Nigeria, so I'll just limit what I know to um, Nigerians, the requirements for most Nigerians. So I, I think your bachelor's degree, your transcript, which has to be sent directly from your university's official email. So basically that's just it, yeah. Except for other requirements uh, by the school, like specific requirements, but the general requirement is just your bachelor's degree and transcript, and of course, application fee. Oh, okay, that's yeah. nice. Um, yeah. if I were to ask Cynthia, like, is it difficult to learn the Swedish language? <laughs> it's, not it's, not <laughs> See, it's not difficult it's not you put difficult. your mind to it and if you're good with language then it's very easy for me I'm not good with language in fact I'm still in nursery school because I'm talking to you after how many years but not not, be, not because I'm not good with it. wait I don't understand nursery school for... <laughs> I'm in nursery school yes in nursery school, yeah. <laughs> Because you have to start from I'm the not basics. like you. Yeah, you know, just go from Swedish language. That is what it is. Because what it is. you have to start from the basics. Learning, learning I, 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 you, ah, on. All those on. basic English words. Right. You have to learn it in right. Swedish. In in Swedish. Swedish. Before you now climb, you now write some climb, exams and then move for the But for me, I have to stop in between because I gave birth, birth, birth like two consecutive like years. So I had to stop, stay home, and all that. But I went back to it. I went back to it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, guys, your question is answered. Somebody is asking Jenny, do you need to have any nursing experience to study in Sweden? And we have a question from for Annie. Please, as an international student, after pursuing your master's degree in nursing in Sweden, can you get a job after? Okay, I think this is for Jenny as well, for nursing, since you did nursing. Mm -hmm. Mm. So we'll start with yeah. the first one. Do you uh, have? Do you need to have any nursing experience to study nursing in Sweden? No, no, I was no, not in nursing. In... Before I moved, I was nineteen years old when I moved to Sweden. Okay, so I was already in the university and I was studying linguistics and communication. <laughs> so I was not a science student. I didn't do anything that had to do with science. Um, but then I moved to Sweden and then everybody was like, "Okay, you are abroad. Just study the nursing. Do the nursing, and then." I said, okay, I jumped on the bandwagon and I studied nursing. So there was no any, that you have to have like any knowledge. I didn't have any knowledge or anything. So I just learned everything in school. So it doesn't really matter. You can come as you are. That's it. That's great. So um, second question is, as an international student, after pursuing your master's degree in nursing in Sweden, can you get a job after run? And again, if I'm ask um, Annie, sorry, if you have a PGD, can you study in Sweden if you don't have maybe bachelor's degree? So let's start with um, the other one, the first one as an inter international student, after pursuing your degree in nursing, can you get a job after? Uh, it might be a, a little bit difficult because um, the language is required. As a nurse, you're going to be working with um, individuals swedish people um okay so it is a requirement that you can speak the language so even though you are done they might ask you to take up the language course you might have to take up the language course so they have like like the university of gothenburg have like a package that they do for nurses so if you're a nurse from other countries or from any african country or an international nurse you can take up this package. This package covers both the language and any other fields that you might have to cover to fill in the Swedish requirement to get your PIN as a nurse. So it's not just you studying as an international student. You also have to have your, your, your PIN, your license to work as a nurse. And one of the requirements is that you can speak the language. So if you take up this package from the Gothenburg University, you can do it online. You can do it wherever you are. That means you'll be able to, you know, when you're done with it, you're not a qualified nurse, then you can work as a nurse. That's just it. Okay, thank you. So Cash Money mm -hmm. said, good day. I have CCN, but preparing to revalidate. I want to move to Sweden. I don't know what CCNA is. Do you guys have an idea? 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> so if Omar said, if you have a PGD, can you study in Sweden? PGD. I, PGD. I think it's is it postgraduate diploma? PGD. Postgraduate PGD. diploma. Okay. So it's, before okay. you get your bachelor's degree, I think is. I mean, I mean those. Okay, we're not sure. Those with HND, then they do PGD. What's what you just talked about? PGD. Yeah. Apa HND, I think. Apa HND, I think. Yeah, it's like postgraduate diploma yeah. or something. Yeah. So mm. this one is a very important question. Is IELT uh, IELTS needed for to study in Sweden? No. Are you serious? No. Guys, if you need IELTS, a lot no. of people, especially no. my Nigerian people, hate to write IELTS. <laughs> so you don't need to write IELTS, just apply. No. <laughs> this is amazing. So Gilbert no. said, um, what are my chances as an EPD? EPID, oh guys, I'm not good with English. EPID. <laughs> Meologist, I can't pronounce that. <laughs> uh, for a master's degree in public health in Sweden. Um, um, chapter, uh, you're back. Okay, Jenny. Yeah, sorry. yeah, did you hear the question? Oh, um, for me? Master's degree, oh, for me? Yeah, master's degree in public health in Sweden. Do you have an idea? Like, what are the chances? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So for earth related courses, I don't really know much about it. In fact, I was going to ask Jenny because I think what I know is that from outside, um, international students, you can't get admission into um courses related to maybe health. Uh, oh, really? um, yeah. medicine, not singing without the language. So I don't Are really know. I don't know yeah, if, if, if that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, so for, I for, to, like, so so you can't so get admission as, admission as an international as student. But uh, that's what that, that's one thing I was trying to say. Like Gothenburg University, they may. I don't know. If, I don't know if international students can apply for this package. I don't know. But I know Gothenburg University have a package. This package is mainly for nurses. I don't know if it applies to like other people. Um, so for nurses that have moved, maybe dependent if you, if your husband moved here as a worker or you moved to Sweden to another route and then you want to pursue your nursing career, they have a package for nurses. I think it's about a year or a year and a half that package. What you have to do is to go through the package, like you you go, you do some courses, and this package covers both language and everything. And when you're done with the package, you'll be giving admission. But one thing I want to say is that I know of a guy, I was the person that even helped him, like he was staying in Hungary. He's a Nigerian guy, studied, I think, no, it was Ukraine. He studied in Ukraine, um, medicine, but he didn't want to work in Ukraine because of, you know, um, the kind of uh, working condition they have there and then the opportunities and all of that. He wanted to move to Sweden. So what he did as um, a doctor, he's not a nurse, he's a doctor. So I just put him through like, you know, just some advice. And then he went to like this university site. I think Cynthia have that site on her Facebook page. Um, and he went there, took one or two courses and came in. When he came into Sweden, then he went back into the healthcare system. So today, this was this is about three or four years ago. Today, he's working as a doctor in Sweden, like every other normal doctor. Of course, the language is not there, but he's still working. So I don't know if... I think for that, there, there's a little bit of a compromise when it comes to residents, like when it comes to people residing in Europe, do you understand? Okay. There's a little mm -hmm. bit of a compromise there compared to when you are coming from, let me say, African countries. I don't want okay. to say Africa because I don't want to limit it to just Africa. But then I think they compromise when they know you are applying from a European country. But okay. definitely, I don't think I've seen anyone, maybe from Nigeria, apply for nursing and then get it. Mm -hmm. it, it 
will pop up on your on, on the on the site that it, it's available for international students. So you know that's just I I don't I stand to be corrected anyways, but that's what no, I know. No, no, yeah, you, you are right. You're right. I know. You're so, right, I know but... you're from Nigeria here, yeah, but she's still not practicing yet. She's been going through courses from one class to another. In fact, mm -hmm. she's doing a different job now. She and and the language thing. thing. Okay. That's and, the, the and the language, language is, is for everyone. The language is to be like a professional as the language. Mm. You okay. No, you don't, um, you don't no. have to be a professional in the language. No, you have to know it now. You can, you can never be a professional in the language. Because one thing I want to say is that I I lived in in the country for three years before I went to the university to study my nursing degree, and after the nursing degree was for three years, and after that three years, so I lived here for I lived in Sweden for a total of six years. My language was rubbish. Let me just say it was rubbish. But I got a job and I was working. And I was still surviving. So like you don't have to be as long as you can put one or two one or two sentences together, uh, like just swindle your way and you say one thing and you can get what you want to say across. You're good to go. <laughs> you can never be an expert. The, the main thing also is understanding them because when they speak, they don't speak like they're speaking to a foreigner. They speak like they're speaking to their own people. So the, mm. the, the, the hearing them is even the basic thing for us because... It's okay, sir. Anybody can try. If you're if you're good with language, then it's very okay for you. It might not be a problem. Maybe under one year, it might be perfect. And most, you know? and most schools run a language program, and it's free. So you have the opportunity to learn when you get there. So mm -hmm. if you have the time, yeah. you can learn. There's always an yeah, opportunity that's good. to learn. That's, that's what I would, advise, I would advise anybody coming to Sweden, yeah. coming as a student or anything. Why doing your thing? Go and learn the language. It's very, very important. If you want to like relax here, then go and learn the language as you're studying. So you don't have to waste extra time after your studies to start going to the school to learn mm, that. So it's yeah, very important to yeah. combine it with your studies. I, mean, I don't know. It's becoming the same like this. Um, this language thing is going to be an issue. Yeah. So if you just come yeah. in new, if you are new in Sweden, like a student like yourself, and like, how can you get a job? Is does that mean you can't just get any job before you start learning the language? No, no. I, I, I think um, it depends. For bigger cities, there are more job opportunities, and then in, in bigger cities, of course, you have more people who speak English. So mm. getting a job might not really be a barrier when you're in big cities. You understand. And you know, just like most countries, most European countries, where English is not their, their first language, you know, networking is very important. You might not get the opportunity to start applying for jobs, but of course, referrals goes a long way. So mm -hmm. the language is not very much of a barrier when you are not uh, a white collar job. So if it's just like a minor job, then you're good to go. I don't think it should be so much of an obstruction. So that's that's just my, that's, own. That's just my own. Of course, there are people surviving here without knowing how to speak the language. Like I, don't, I can't speak anything. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I mean, thank you so much. Uh, thank but, you but, so much. But, but, you guys have a nice day. For the guys, they can work at night. You have some jobs they do in the night. You don't have to communicate to people. You just throw that is their newspaper and all those things, magazines and all. You can distribute that. It's still a job, and they pay well. You don't you don't meet anybody. Just go deliver what you're doing. I put it in their mail post or something, and then you go. There are lots of jobs you can do like that. You don't need to communicate with anybody at all. So it's all about finding the right one for yourself. I was going to ask Jenny, like, compare, I know pounds is bigger than Swedish currency, but in terms yeah. of value, like, which country do you think pays more? For salary? Salary. Yeah. Like, uh, minimum because, wage. Uh, minimum wage. Um, I would say Sweden. Sweden's minimum wage is bigger, actually. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. 
I think the, the minimum wage in Sweden is, is, is I think it's fifteen thousand or fourteen thousand Swedish crowns. Oh wow! So that means um, so that means um, I think it's an yeah, yeah it's a little bit bigger yeah, than the yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, thank you so much, ladies. You guys have been so amazing, and every one of you watching this live, thank you so much. We mm -hmm. we appreciate your time. So, guys, um, this is the end of the live. Um, Cynthia, are you on YouTube? No, not yet. Not yet. Anne, are you on YouTube? Well, Facebook, yes. Okay. Oh, you're on Facebook. I'm coming to that yes. Facebook. I have a live. I want to go on Facebook live. So, okay, like, you share fine. content about about moving to Sweden. You share content about on Facebook. Yes, that's yes. great. Okay. And are you on YouTube? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> okay. And anyway, and guys, Jenny. Like Sorry. Where did we start? All stationed. Oh, okay, you're very far from us. Oh, okay. from me. <laughs> but um, wait, uh, if um, you um, want to join um, Sweden um, Telegram group, I don't know how. You have a, a Telegram channel for yes, Swedish. Yes, I do. Okay, that yeah. would be great. Like, if you want to move to Sweden, can just join the Telegram channels of yours. Yes. So, uh, yes. Is there a way? Can you like send the link to me, or maybe leave? Uh, maybe after this live, can you leave the comment of the um the link in the comment section so I can pin it? Like I'll just write if you're interested in, or just write if you're interested in migrating to um Sweden, join this Telegram channel, and I'll pin it so that everybody that watched the video after can just go in there to search for it. Okay, there's no problem. I will. Okay. Thank you so much. Ladies, you guys have been amazing. It's been one mm -hmm. hour talking to you guys, and we have come to the end of this live. So thank you so much. Bye, ladies. Yeah, okay, bye. 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 Bye.